And how y'all doing? What is this week eight? What's this week? Six? I can't remember the weeks what we're doing right now. So, well, welcome, welcome, welcome back on a Monday night. As always, I'm happy to have you. I'm Julia Coney, a wine journalist based in Washington D.C. right now and Houston, but today it I am in D.C. and I'm with the lovely, fabulous, talented Miss Blaine Ashley, who I met. What is it? Four or five years ago, when you were doing New York Champagne Week. It was 2016. Yeah, yes. it was, um, and I'm still doing it, but it was yeah. down at DC in DC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for DC DC Champagne Week. DC Champagne Week, and so then we hit it off, and we just been like connected ever since. And so when she launched the Fizz is Female, I just thought the whole name to me is just, I love that. I think the whole concept of people, women in bubbly, and like you also have, is it Pompette? Pompette, so um, my company was City Sip, or it still is City Sip LLC, and basically Champagne Week, Business Female, it was the umbrella that kind of born those two concepts, and um, the name kind of just felt a little bit played out to me, and so I decided to change the name of the company to Pompettes two years ago, which means tipsy in French, and it's Pompette NYC, and under that umbrella, I do consulting, and then I have all the events. And also, let's let's clarify. You were yeah. the originator of the New York Champagne Week. Yes. Yeah, okay. I, let's get that out you, before anybody. I know. Got to <laughs> I know. So I, I I like to say now I'm it, the original New York Champagne Week. I launched it in 2013. So um, and I I was early to the party at that time. There were really no. Uh, you didn't see grower champagnes on menus, on lists anywhere. And a lot of these people didn't have importers distribution in New York or in the US. So I actually first cleared champagnes from Champagne to get into New York. I worked with a clearing house the first year. Oh, wow. You did not see lists mm. the way you do today. No, no, no. But no. I did want everybody to know you were first. Thank you. There's yeah. a lot of champagne weeks out there now. <laughs> yeah, not of them, but I appreciate that. Yeah, but no, you are the first. So then tell us, like, how did you get started? Like, what, what how did you get started? And then why bubbles? Okay. Um, well, through my original company, City Sip, City Sip was actually an online content forum before there was like an eater.com out there. Um, I had worked with, Polana knows this, I worked with Hot Living and Modern Luxury as a scene reporter. And I also did scene and drinks reporting for a tasting panel. And um, I decided to launch an online forum called City Sip, and my advertising would be live events. So at all of my events, I was like, well, there has to be champagne or sparkling wine. And I quickly just kind of, people started calling me like bubbly Blaine, champagne Blaine, all stuff like that. So I was actually on assignment with tasting panel and I was writing before Instagram. So I've been a little bit ahead of everything. <laughs> like, um, and then, um, I was doing an article called Tour de France. I was actually spending a month in um, France. And part of that assignment was for me to go to uh, Vin Expo in Bordeaux. And I really didn't know what I was going to do there, what the angle was. And I met a sommelier in the lobby of my hotel. And he was like, do you want to walk the show with me? And I said, sure, why not? He's like, I'm a sommelier in Sweden and I'm opening a champagne bar so we can only drink champagne. Cause we only had two days to like scour the show. And the show is the size of like three football fields. It's massive. It's like Lake Bend, Italy. And so um, while I was just walking the show with him, I started telling people what I did in New York, promoting wines and spirits. And all of these champagne houses were like, help us come to New York, like help us get into New York. And I was like, okay. And then like basically on that month long trip, I was like, I'm going to go back to New York and search for the trademark New York Champagne Week. And I'm going to start Champagne Week. Oh my God. <laughs> and this was in June, 2013. And then I decided I wanted to do it in November, the top of November to be able to hit champagne business and, mm -hmm. and I'm sorry, the, the champagne season business and all of that. I didn't even know what OND was then. I was so novice. And um, all of my mentors were like, you're don't do it, wait a year. Like if you, you, you're not ready for this. And I was like, no, if I don't do it now, then someone else will do it. And sure mm -hmm. enough, the next year, two people did it. And then one came back and that was Peter Liam. So I love that to Champagne. So, um, but my week has always been so different. Um, I wanted immediately, I wanted to take my fashion and events background 
and do lifestyle focused events and keep it complementary to trade and media and use it as a forum to, for houses to stand out and not have any grand tastings, anything like that. I wanted to do really fun, creative, catchy events. And in New York, and you know this, Julia, because you come to New York all the time in your media, you get flooded with invitations to events. And at this point, I mean, you know, people just have too much to do and you can't really Mm -hmm. rely on people showing up. So you have to come from a place of authenticity and some fun and creativity to get people to show up to your events. And if you're just peddling products, the trade isn't interested and the media isn't, isn't interested either. So knowing that from my media background, I tried to incorporate that into the week from the get-go. Much to Champagne's chagrin, <laughs> they did not support my creativity in the beginning. I mean, I actually got letters from the CIBC petitioning against what I was doing, kind of like cease and desist stuff. And I'm like, I'm promoting, you know, <laughs> I'm promoting oh, wow. champagne. And I, yeah, I had to write letters. Like I really was stuck, uh, stayed the course. And, um, you know, I just had to believe in what I was doing and I stayed the course. And then finally wine enthusiasts wrote me up and then things kind of snowballed Snowball. in, a, in a good way from there. Yeah. Okay. And so then when did the pivot happen from just like champagne blame to like all things fizz so uh, throughout the years and obviously the CIVC made it you know in the several <laughs> communications we had they're like you know you cannot promote anything else and I was like of course I know that and I don't know if you guys have heard of champagne Jane in Australia but she got sued because she was using or putting other bubbles on her um like morning news show segments stuff like that she won but she called herself Champagne Jane. And so basically, uh, you know, there's a ton of premium sparkling out there. And I wanted to be able to, to showcase some other sparklings. Like I love Ferrari. I have a great relationship with Ferrari, Italian sparkling. And there's some beautiful stuff coming out of Baja. And I mean, there's tons of wonderful premium sparklings. So that was the first um, thought. And I, and I couldn't include them in Champagne Week. And I've done a Prosecco Week and I've done a a kava kind of similar week, but not ongoing. And then, um, you know, just being a female in this business and not always having the support that I could have using it, could have used and then going it alone. Mm -hmm. I just kind of had this moment where I'm like, the fizz is female and it'll be all female made and owned or heavily led sparkling wines. And I ran with it again. I'm very entrepreneurial, obviously. I just I have ideas and I run with them and sometimes I don't think about them too hard. And I just, I'm like, I'm doing it. If it's in my head and I feel my gut feels like I should do it, I do it. And that's it. And I don't really listen to what anyone has to say. <laughs> During this time, people, somebody was on a call who's hearing that maybe if the, whatever idea is. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right Go now, for it. Cause if you, you know. overthink it, I mean, it gets harder as you get older and obviously, you know, as you get, have more responsibilities and all of that and paying a New York rent and uh, not having a significant other and not having anything to fall back on, that can be challenging. But I really do feel overthinking is the devil of most uh, uh, great ideas. <laughs> okay. And also then like, but how do you find these people, women in, in fees? I mean, because, you know, it is not, it's hard enough being a woman in Champagne. And then being a woman all over the world trying to make fears and trying to find them because that is mm-hmm. the key. Like when we think of how the market is, right? The market is, we know like there's the bigger houses and they're perfectly fine, but even still, a lot of people don't know if they're women led, women led, women made. Yeah. So just like Champagne Week, you know, I went with my immediate circle and I basically just strong armed them into getting involved. Um, so I remember like Jeffrey, we were talking about earlier from Bill Akar, um, he didn't really, wasn't sold on it, but he got involved <laughs> the first year. So I just found the people I knew that, and I talked to good, you know, I was like very confident and <laughs> enthusiastic and they gave me a chance. Um, for Fizz is Female, I work really closely with Rita Jamey, as you know, uh, mm-hmm. Julia, Rita of La Caravelle, and um, Rita even, it took a while to get Rita to trust in me because she's very hands-on with her brand, and I mean, she's had the La Caravelle brand for over 20 years since it came from the restaurant that she owned, and um, you know, Rita's incredible, and she's such a mentor and mom to everyone in New York, and she just loved it, and she signed on to getting involved right away. 
And then I did some posts on women's forums and just asking if anyone knew of anyone who is, has a female maid owned or heavily led. So like CEO, president, um, CFO, even a global ambassador role, of uh, bubbly wine. And through that, I got Tanya Faulkner, who was one of mm-hmm. the um, first people that came on to Champagne Week, and she is the founder of Le Grand Portage. But I wanted to tell, for a business female, I like to focus more on the individual stories and not so much about just the wines that they, mm-hmm. they, they make or represent. I want to know a little bit more about how they got to where they were, like Tanya, for instance, she comes from an architectural background and she just went to France and decided she saw a gap in the marketplace and started Le Grand Cortage. Um, Rita was one of the first people to do a private label champagne. And then of course, Michelle DeFeo, who we had on last week and the week before, she's the president of Laurent Perrier and she just is a Francophile and fell into wine and then has just climbed her way up the corporate ladder. So. Yeah. And Laurent Perrier, what a lot of people don't realize is actually the house is made is from a woman. Like they don't realize, mm-hmm. like, you know, like that we get a lot of other, the other brand that's made at for or another, it was another basically dead widow, technically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? And so interesting enough, uh, Becky is asking, what does Blaine think when people call everything champagne? Uh, I'm going to let you answer that because you and I, I mean, I'm going to just let you answer that. Well, I silently growl. Like I get very (laughs) upset. I mean, it's the bane of my existence. And it's so funny because I'm staying down in Hilton Head with my family right now. And my mom corrects everybody. Like, it's amazing. I've like coached her. So someone will say, oh, we're having champagne. She's like, no, champagne is only made in the champagne region. And it's it's amazing. (laughs) Like, I'm like, I'm so happy. Like I've taught her something. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I mean, I think it comes down to education and um that was another reason i launched champagne week and i've launched the physis female to showcase all of the regions that produce bubbly and the stories behind those regions and the people that make make the wines so. now let's talk because i know people may not realize mm-hmm. you have cre- you created a champagne the bull de- yeah bull de Rev. um yeah. so it was a collaboration label and i was actually consulting a house um, that didn't have distribution in the U.S. yet on modernizing their labels. It was a Champagne Lombard. And um, yeah, I was helping them modernize their labels. At the time, a lot of the houses were just doing one like millennial label. So mm-hmm. it's like you have like the one disco <laughs> ball label and then the rest are very like traditional. And I thought that was so silly. And now houses are getting a little bit more modernized across the board. But um, then about that same week, I went to uh, have a drink with someone. And it was like one of those cases where someone connects you, oh, you should have a drink. And you're like, oh, now I have to go have a drink with this person <laughs> because I was just CC'd on this email, you know? Like, yeah. I got like strong-armed into it. And so I went and had a drink and I won't say who they were, but they were females that were not from the business and they had launched their own wine label. And I was enraged after because they, I was like, what? Like, I need to have my own wine label. Like, I, if they're doing their own wine label, I have to have my, my wine label. Since I'm consulting these people the next day, I literally emailed them and I was like, do you want to do a collaboration label? And like, I came up with the name in 24 hours, like oh, wow. labeled everything. I was just like, we're, I'm going for it. And they, I basically said they could piggyback off of my exposure from Champagne Week to then penetrate the market and get exposure to distributors. And I promised to ambassador and sell all of the wine, which I did surrounding this fourth annual Champagne Week. And that's when you and I met. Mm -hmm. And um, if I got like a percentage of the deals. So it was really a collaboration. I don't own the label. And it was kind of an exclusive one-time thing, at least for that label. And um, it was That's worked. a boss move. That's a boss move. It is, <laughs> I will say it's delicious. It was, it's delicious though. It's so good. And there's, so only, good. there's only like three bottles left in at all. That's so my, crazy. my parents have one and then I sold two pallets and I didn't, I mean. T- tell how many people what is on a pallet. Because you have to break that down. Remember, because you know uh, and I know what a pallet is. 54 to 60, 56, yes, 56 uh, cases. cases. Um, So I had never sold wine and I just basically went to every venue that was involved in Champagne Week and I said, well, this is like our 
flagship wine for the week. This is what we want you to like do like a glass special on, or you can promote it and we'll do case deals. And I'm just learning as I go. <laughs> and one of my really good sales rep friends, Eric, I was actually a bridesmaid in his wedding on his side of the party. So I was his bridesmaid. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> he had, was going through a rough like personal time and I was like, you can hang out with me and help me sell wine. And I was just being a brat kind of, <laughs> but like he walked around town and I did my whole thing, like marketing the label and the wine and pouring out wine. And then Eric was coming in with like the technical words. So we kind of tag team the market together. And it worked out like beautifully. But that's technically, you know, that's between, you know, 450 to 500 bottles. That's a lot of bottles to sell. I know. I was shocked. A lot of bottles like, to In sell. retrospect, now that I know how hard it is. And I mean, it introduced a whole other level too to Champagne Week because then I knew how to come into venues with events and like make it all work together. Like get the brand what they needed, which was an account, the venue support. Like I learned so much more mm -hmm. um, than just approaching the venue to throw an event and like the the ROI and the added value for every party involved just was increased through my experience of selling my own wine and learning the business of the wine industry and I've never been one to like I mean of course I read but I, I like to learn by doing and okay. I and I learn by falling flat on my face and then getting up and doing it again and it infuriates some people in my life but for me that's just the best that's strategy. Bit, that's, but that's every that's every entrepreneur's story. It's not like yeah. it just happens. So you know, there's like there's those you know it's like it waves, it ebbs and flows in it. Like there's high, really great highs, and there's really great lows. Totally. And, <laughs> I, and I and I, and I kind of thrive off of those. Like, who would think that we'd be? I mean, I feel like I'm in a good place right now with this uh, market. And that's like, what are the chances? Like, it's like COVID and like, I'm actually figuring out great ways to expand and pivot my business. So who would have thought, you know, that would happen? I yeah. certainly never did. I'm busier <laughs> now, with, like literally with these calls and everything than I was traveling, it's, which is crazy. Know, I'm like, I you know, know, I've got more emails and trying to talk. And my whole thing is like bringing people I want to interview people, one, who I like. That's always, if I don't like totally. you, I'm not interviewing you. I don't, and, totally. you know, I get all people, I'm like, mm, no. Yeah. I don't want to interview you. But also to bring the business to people who are just consumers, right? Because that's the way that they're, it puts them in a different mind place and it also gives them that education. So that's one of the things I love too. And so right now we can start about like, let's talk about these wines. So first of all, yeah. These are sparkling wines from Chile. You can, you tell the story and I'm just going to type in what we're drinking. And also okay. like, cause this brute is sick. I'm trying not to drink this whole bottle tonight. Cause I got like two open bottles. So I'm just like, it's going to be yeah. rough, man. Oh, so tough. Um, <laughs> so, so tough. So, um, in addition to the Physis Female and Champagne Week, I've been upping my consulting and just helping uh, female-led companies market and strategize um, business, whatever, all that good stuff. <laughs> um, I've been doing that for the last um, year or so, a little bit more. And um, this wine is called Mujer Andina, and it was inspired by the and the name was inspired by the Andes Mountains, and it's made by a female, uh, Andrea Duarte. And she was set to be involved. So I'll backtrack just a minute. This year, I was going to be taking Fizz's Female across the country to various food and wine festivals. We were going to go to Batonage, Bubbles in uh, San Diego, looking into Aspen Food and Wine, as Falana knows, and uh, concluding the year's events during the seventh annual Champagne Week, which is in November in New York. And that is going to happen, um, so in some capacity. So please stay tuned to that. But I met Andy, the owner and winemaker of Mohair and Dina back in October. And I'll tell you what made me gravitate toward her. It was a tasting for her, dis her distributor put on a tasting and she had like the best earrings on. And, she, <laughs> I love and, I, and I just walked over to her and I was like, what is with your earring game? Like, it's so cool. Like they were just so cool. They were like mix matched and really cool. And she looked like kind of beachy and like, she just has this great style. And that was immediately how I gravitated to her table. And then I noticed her 
bottle of wine and check this out. Can it you is, get it? That's so, I love it. <laughs> Literally, she's in her heels, drunk in the, in the glass. I love it. And I so resonated with this. <laughs> I, I just, I fell in love with this label design because as I said, I was, cons I consult a little bit on label designs and label strategy. So this just made me like go crazy. And then I was like, if the juice is just as good, I want to work with her. And sure enough, the juice was just that good. And that day I said, I run this thing called Physics Female and I want you to be involved and here's my <laughs> card and da, da 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 and she like barely she's like I like nice, nice to meet you like she doesn't speak very good English so I'm friends with her female owned distribution company um Francis Gonzalez of Despacito Distributors and they do all organic and vegan wine so I traded information with Andy and then I reached out to Francis and I put them on an email and I was like, I'm working with you. Like I'm working with you, whether you like it or not. I love it. <laughs> and um, so I, the name of this uh, uh, sparkling wine, and it is a 60% Chardonnay, 40% Pinot Noir. I means um, love in Japanese, which is so fun. And it also is the exclamation they use in Chile. So it's like, I pretty, I da 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 da. Okay. It's like they're like, yay, kind of like it's like I. <laughs> so it's this girl like I bubbles diving into the the, the bubbly um, glass of coop. I'm sorry, coop of bubbly. So um, that's where the label comes from. The wine is Charmant Method. And you want to explain um, that to people? So it's a may, but, yeah. Yeah, it's the stainless steel uh, tank method that is used generally for wines like Prosecco. Um, so it is not champagne method. Um, and it was aged uh, six months in the steel tank. Okay. How long was it in bottle? Do you know? Um, I don't know that. I'll have to get back to you on that. No problem. Let me see if I have it right here somewhere. Um, I don't know. This goes down real easy. You guys. Yeah. I put so this is in the... In the um, in the um, chat, so the links to the wines. Yeah, so it's beautiful, and you can find it on Vegan Wines, and we also collaborated with a website called clubbubbly.com to do a Fizz's Female wine package. It's three bottles of bubbly, all female-made, owned, or led, uh, and we have Laurent Perrier involved in that. We have this iBrute, and we have um, a female-owned brand called Le Grand Quartage, which I was speaking about earlier. And someone's asking, what, what makes a vegan wine? Um, so no, like animal flesh is used. So a lot of these, uh, I, I didn't know this until recently. Um, a lot of these um, wineries, like the tanks, they use fish flesh. Have you heard that? Fish flesh, egg whites are one. Um, sometimes, um, oh, it's from beef. It's uh, gelatin. It's, it's, yeah. it's not called gelatin, but it's gelatinous, and they'll, they'll yeah. find the wines through that as well. Right, and then also, yeah. like, the fertilizer, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the, the, basic, the basic information about that. But you can check it out on veganwines.com. There's a whole lowdown on what makes a wine vegan. Um, yeah. Oh, thanks gonna... for linking that. That's great. Oh, yeah. You yeah. talk, and then I, I try to grab okay. everything real fast, like, while I can. And um, the Syrah, so the 100%. Well, we got to, women, we got to talk a little bit about, about this Oh, one. go ahead. Okay. okay. So like you guys, so <laughs> Sorry. no, like on the nose. And so like I'm in W set three. So now I'm trying yeah. to like taste to the test, which is, you know, oh, it's lemon green. It's medium minus body, you know, all that kind of crazy stuff. But definitely it's one of those, like you could sit down outside with a book, like, not like it's something you know at home and this goes down real easy like this is delicious yeah it's so green and bright to me and then um the citrus just explodes just enough nose. acid yeah. to like hold yeah. it together and but um this is a good crab wine you know it's crab if you in, if you're in dc area you know it's, it's crab season all year round like it doesn't change that's how we do this is like my crab wine yeah yes. Shayna, i got some dc people here like yeah this is this is <laughs> This is it. Yeah, seafood tapas, um, perfect aperitivo wine, of course. It's, it's gulpable. I've gotten in trouble on some of these Zooms from just drinking the bottle. <laughs> no, but, uh, but you can't be drunk because you have a 7.30. No, um, I, I know. You gotta, yeah, you, so we're, we're going to plug that at the, at the end of the chat, too. 
that's, oh, yeah. that's going to be fun. Um, yeah, oysters, ceviches. It's a, it's an awesome wine. It's a great Taco Tuesday wine. Oh yeah, but yeah. yeah, it's crab in Hilton Head where I am right now. They're doing all the crab, everything. So we just had soft shells, and now we have the. the Did you have this with the soft shell? Like with that, I know. I'm because are they I deep fried? Did. You're in the south because everything's deep fried. So yeah, um, but they're doing this new crab, and and you have to understand, I'm from Hawaii, and we don't do the, the shellfish the way that you guys do it on the east coast so even though i've been here 10 years on the in new york um, it's not the same it's, it's, trust me yeah but we don't do like oysters lobster really in hawaii do we no no you do poke <laughs> this would be good with poke yeah oh amazing with poke. oh my god just like really good poke so yeah, yeah it's I'm, really really good grapefruit it's just a beautiful easy Beautiful bottles of yes. wine. I mean, and people, when we put it on Club Bubbly, people freaked out about it. I mean, we sold out really quickly. Well, I see why perspective. It? She brought in five cases, and within a month, she brought in seven more. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's good to Maybe know. Maybe I should get back to selling wine. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> wine is going up right now. And also, too, it has a good mousse. I mean, the bubbles are staying. Mm -hmm. They're tight. They're concentrated. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, now let's talk about the, I, the Vita Serra sorry, Rose. Levita, yeah. Uh, so the Levita was Andy's first wine. And um, Andy wanted to do a premium sparkling with 100% Syrah and in the champagne method. So she actually says that she believes she's the, or she knows she's the first to do a premium Champenois method, 100% Syrah in Chile and possibly the world, which is interesting. Which is interesting. <laughs> but yeah, so this was kept for six to eight months on the Lees, and then it was aged 24 months, and then mm -hmm. another six in the bottle. So it was aged quite a long time. And to be considered, so 30, 32 months, mm -hmm. and to be considered Champenois method, it must age for at least 15. So she went double plus the amount. Which is amazing because I always tell people, like, it's very, when you're doing non-vintage and you, you surpass the minimum 15 months, like, you may do, like, 18, 20, 24. It really does change what is happening in the bottle. Yeah. This wine is stunning. The bottle also just as cute, a little bit different, but um, it's kind of these like bubbly. Oh my gosh. Who designs the labels? Do you know? Does she work in the no. process of designing them or? You know what? I asked her today. I was like, I know I'm going to get this question and I never got the answer. <laughs> no, it's okay. So, um, actually on Wednesday on Fizz is female, we actually are going to be speaking with her Wednesday evening on Zoom. Mm -hmm. And we have her distributor, who is Spanish, um, there to kind of uh, translate if we need. Um, okay. But I've promised Andy that by, my, by Harvest 2021, I will be able to speak Spanish. Oh, wow. That's a lot. Which is crazy because I'm a Francophile <laughs> like you. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm very motivated. That's a good challenge though. I, I'm going to throw this out there because I want it to happen. And maybe if I say it out loud, it will happen. Are you on Duolingo? Have you like worked on your Duolingo yet? You should go on Duolingo and, and try to do that. No, I have. I do. I, I go on it all the time. Um, but I want to say this out loud because maybe that'll I'll manifest it to happen. I would love to take do a physics female trip in 2021 and maybe maybe we can take her to take people to chile for harvest to see andrea that yeah now Might let's put it out there yes like let's make that happen i, I can go to right? chile yes in march i mean come on that's the best yeah. time to go yeah and we all lost our marches this year so well i mean we we i mean <laughs> look i am not gonna have a hot girl summer this year i have convinced this i just hope everything works out so i can have a hot girl holiday <laughs> that you know I'm okay with that I, I'm just trying to you know to make that happen and as long as everybody stays safe I mean it's tough out here for a lot of people so yeah somebody said check Babel um for language oh thank you said, yeah <laughs> so this wine red fruit central I mean it's it hits you like just crazy. like bean cherries totally. red cherries. 
um, cherry, 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 cherries, a little bit of strawberry, a little yeah. bit of raspberry, but really cherry. Mm -hmm. like, also Rainier cherries, which I are my favorite. Some, I even get some peach. Oh, okay. Maybe like white peach on this, but oh, um, mm -hmm. sorry, everyone. It's delicious. <laughs> you should go to veganwines.com or club. Well, that's the thing. Get a we, we got time to sell. Like, here's the thing. People at home, they get time to research. They get time yeah. to figure it out. You know, what are they, you know, what do we want to drink? And everything like that. And I am looking in. It's so funny because um, I'm seeing Kate Payne Brown here from Stoller. Uh, and she is like a bubble fanatic as well. And she makes bubbles out of Oregon too. So it's kind of cool to have all these bubbly ladies on here. And oh, Rita's on here. Hey, Rita. Yeah, I know. Oh my God. Hey. This is amazing. I love it. I just typed to everyone the two okay. sites that you can find the wine. Uh, so this wine also just launched in uh, February in oh, the US. Wow. In, in the, the US. US. Okay. It's, it's a top seller. It's hugely popular in Chile. It's in all the restaurants, all the best restaurants in Chile. I've never been, so I, the, yeah, I don't know. And I, I really, really want to go next year. It's on my list. I'm turning 40. So I'm like 40, ring in 40 in 2021 in Chile. Why not? Why not? Oh, this is amazing. This is Isn't great. Isn't it beautiful? It is and so then beautiful. For me, this wine, I had it for my birthday this year. My birthday was April 1st and we did it with um, a shrimp oil. Okay, very, very South Carolina, very South Carolina. It was Carolina. perfect, but I think like octopus, uh, gamey meat. I keep tell telling my parents, I'm like, I want duck medallions. And they like laugh at me. They're like, who are you? I was like, if I was Rita, she'd give me duck medallions. <laughs> <laughs> you know who has really, um, she's a winemaker out of California. Her name is, her winery is Raft Wines, but her handle on Instagram is Duck Daughter. Her family are duck farmers. Oh. And they make, they sell duck meat. It is literally the best duck you will ever buy. Like, Ooh, literally, uni. yeah. Someone just said uni. That's Rita. That's Rita. If you want uni, go out with Rita. Uni, yeah. caviar, and truffle. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Now, would you pair this with truffle, though? I can see uni and I can see caviar, but I don't know about truffle. This is a lot going on. No, I would go back to the, the eye and do, like, a crab pasta with truffle. We're talking about crab season. Oh, okay. Like this restaurant over here, I can't think of this crab, this whatever crab is in season right now. Here. Is it like blue crab, head. Dungeness crab? No, it's like, is it like a king crab? Yep, they have king crab. Um, yeah. So king crab, it's, some, it's a big thing on menus right now, like for the moment and Hilton mm -hmm. Head, but someone's doing this incredible ravioli with truffle and king crab and it we saw it on Instagram today and my mom and I were like, we might have to go there. Oh, that's, that's good. That's good. <laughs> but I would do the eye brutes with that. Um, but this, uh, I think like, you know, like octopus, mm -hmm. kind of like these like meteor fish or like a salmon. Yeah, um, th th this is right. It needs a lot of, it needs food because, yeah. it's, you know, I was drinking it, drinking the eye, but this one is hitting faster. And this is the champagne method. So they're, it's interesting. She says two, done two. And then she is going to be coming out with her first still line okay. in 2020, maybe now actually 2020, a rosé, a still rosé. Well, it was interesting that she decided to do the Syrah in the champagne method mm -hmm. and not the, not the, you know, the, the Chardonnay the and the Pinot Noir. Yeah. Like, yeah. Really, which is really interesting, but also it gives it different flavors and complexity to me. I think that wouldn't work necessarily if she did this in a Charmant method. Right. Oh, there she is, actually. She's and Andrea. Andrea, Hi. can we see you? You want to pop in? Can Can you say hello? I'm on. Uh, yeah. Can Hi, you tell Andrea? Us? Hey, we're, yes. we're drink. We're drinking your wines. Yeah, I see you. <laughs> I never used the Zoom, but <laughs> I am very happy you take. Oh. Hi, Thank Andrea. You much. Oh my you? God, you came on the Zoom. Thank you. I'm so excited. Like, I'm like, it's like Christmas now. It's so awesome. Yeah, see what I'm saying about your earrings? I said that I first met Kate. Yes. I said you have the best earrings. <laughs> I use the same because now I have a live in vivo in Chile at mm -hmm. seven with a um, journalist in Chile. Um, oh, okay. I see, I see you and I'm so happy about your comments about Levita and I. And Wednesday I told you more about the labels and the artists behind the labels. And um, 
I am one B artist in science I mine a child, but the paints are not mine. It's a friend of mine who paints the the, the, the labels, the, the draw. Oh, they're they're beautiful. Blaine, um, can you drop the link to your Zoom? Because uh, Andrea and Blaine are talking on Wednesday. Is it six or seven? Uh, six p.m. Eastern, Eastern Standard, Standard Time. Time. So you can just, join where Andrea is going to talk about her labels and wine as well. Yeah, I just did the link to my website and the virtual events, and then you can see right there. Andrea is the next one um, on the on the. Okay, link. now now I I left left you because. I only say hello because I am so happy you speak so much about it. Yay! Well, we're coming and to Chile. And you like Andrea, it. Andrea, we're coming to Chile. Did you hear me say we're coming to Chile in uh, 2021? Yes, come yes. to Chile next year. I hope the coronavirus is done. Yes. No, yeah. more, no more COVID-19, no more nothing. And obviously, I I waiting here in Chile for the harvest or whatever you want oh thank you so much yes thank you, thank you andy thanks for coming thank in. you so much thank i'm you. sorry for saying hello sorry no we love <laughs> it <laughs> i love it i love that bye bye, bye. bye. cheers bye bye, bye. say it say cheers 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 yeah, how do you say it in spanish no chin, chin, uh, salud salud salud, salud. Salud. Yes, I, know salud. I know that. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah. Salud. Cheers, salud. Andy. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. Bye. 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 Wow. That was like so <laughs> appropriate. Like it was like so crazy. Like that was just like, hey, hey. So I love that. It is 641 because I know you got to chat at seven. You got to get together and everything. So what I'm going to do is open it for questions. So if anybody has any questions, I'm going to unmute, and if you, if I feel like you're like background noise, I'm just going to mute everybody back. Listen, but, I'm ready to roll right into my 7:30 with Philippe. I mean, it couldn't be oh, a better. Okay. Oh okay. wait, I have to tell everyone about that really quickly. You have to tell everybody what's happening okay. at 7:30. So thank you. Also, them. Shakira, thank you for posting on Andrea's Instagram so much. Thank you so much, Shakira. Thank so you. So everybody, go follow Andy. Go follow Blaine. Blaine, you have the physics female. You have and then champagne. Champagne Blaine. Blaine. Yes. Um, so Fizz is female is obviously all things female, bubbly related, and then Champagne Blaine is all champagne, and male or female. <laughs> so uh, because I've been doing Fizz is female for now three years, and I have some friends that are males in Champagne, I thought it was <laughs> time to give them a moment to shine. So again, to Julia's point, only working with people I really loved. Um, but I'm launching tonight at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Schman Pain Dreams. I'm a dork. <laughs> so I, again, it was another idea that I just came up with in a day. Messaged my amazing graphic designer, who Rita also works with, Abby, who used to work at Food & Wine Magazine. And I was like, I need a graphic, Schman Pain Dreams, make the man stand out. I'm doing it. I'm starting it May, May 18th. And um, so it's men in champagne. And, and who are you actually, let's tell everybody who you're interviewing though. I mean, I mean, talking so, with, so yeah. This is my, I do, so every Wednesday at 6 p.m. I do Fizz's female Zoom chats with females and bubbly wine. And then this is my more casual counterpart that will happen every other Monday on Champagne Blaine Insta Live. And this evening is the inaugural Schman Pain Dreams with Philippe Andre, the U.S. ambassador of Charles Heidzik Champagne. And he couldn't be a better subject for this because he is like so big and he's just he a is a personality. personality. <laughs> and the first time we ever hung out, we were supposed to meet up at like five and I was at yoga. It was like noon and he's like can we meet up at two instead and this is why i have an invitation to an exclusive club to have champagne and caviar and like i can pick you up at 145 and i'm like uh yeah <laughs> so right after yoga i like beat it home and got ready really quickly and we went to the nexus club which is owned by tiger woods and justin timberlake and ate all the caviar and drank all the champagne and our this was like 2 p.m and it lasted until like 2 a.m <laughs> 
Oh, wow. I mean, it was the start. That's a trooper. Was, I know, but that's a trooper. That, I mean, it you, was you, not, uh, yes. But every invitation he's ever, like, sent me, it's kind of like he's, like, the male version of Rita. He's like, oh, <laughs> he, like, the last one was like, I have a very exclusive invitation to a chef's house in Brooklyn, and he's a Michelin chef, and we're going to have tacos and champagne. And I'm like, what? <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, he's just over the top. So. Yeah. Tonight, it's uh, Philippe at 7.30 on Champagne Blaine, Insta Live. And then um, on June 1st, so it'll be every other week that I'll post on Champagne Blaine. We're doing Jeff Bois. <laughs> From out, Bilicar, so of no. Bilicar. And he was probably my first friend in Champagne, or in the Champagne business, to be honest, or one of them. Um, we met very early on, and I strong arm- armed him into getting involved in Champagne Week the first year. Oh, that's nice. So Shakira has a question. So I'm unmuting you, Shakira. Hi. Hey, baby Sorry, girl. I had my picture up to start because I was still working. But hi, everyone. Hi. hi. We've hi. actually met a few times. I know. Randomly. I just, that's why I was like so, <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Yes, I am here. Um, so I think that, you know, it's so inspiring to hear you talk about just like, you know what, I have an idea. So I'm going to do it and see what happens. Um, but for, you know, I think that you've done so much to bring women to the forefront and continuing with bringing diversity and, and showcasing like women from South America and women of color and all that stuff. Um, do you have anything, I know there aren't that many women of color that are making champagne, but with your events, I always think that it's such a good mix of people. Thank so you. how do you go about, like, I think that you're one of the few brands that, like, when you're inviting trade and you're inviting media, no one ever seems like the only person in the room. Like, the event at the Riddler was just amazing. Thank I you had, so much. It was so good. Thank you. So how do you, it seems like you're very intentional when you think about your events to create experiences that are not only diverse, but they're authentically diverse. It's not like, oh, I picked four women from here, three women from here. So when you think about your brand, like how do you organically go about creating this feeling of authenticity around everything that you do? So this is exact, this is insane, but it's the truth. Um, I literally cherry pick every single person that gets the invitation. So it's like, I don't have like an email. Well, to, I'm starting to get an emailer for these for this female Zooms I'm doing. But I literally want to curate the audience to make sure that we get the people in the room that are the, the people that will appreciate the event. So um, I hand type in the emails and, I, I, I do, and that's insane because no one does that. But that's something I've always done. And people are like, you, you can't do that. And I'm like, but that's how it works for me. Like I need to make sure that, that uh, everyone gets a personalized message. Like even today for the two events, I text it everyone but I don't do a mass text I like I'm like oh hey I saw you were at the wedding yesterday like great like da 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 like here <laughs> come tonight like I think you'll like it you remember that time we hung out with Philippe like I I really curate my messages to my audience and so that's one if that makes sense yeah two I'm from Hawaii like I said so a room of bunch of white men is really boring to me and that's, that's the reason why I launched uh, Champagne Week and this is female and continue to do all these like interesting fun things um I don't I I come from a place of diversity and that's always been very important to me because it's really boring otherwise everything um to your point on women in champagne of color there aren't many, but I actually just got an email from someone, a, a referral, who started a vineyard um, in Champaign, and she just got her plot and was ready to release, and obviously all of this is kind of stifling her. But of I'll, course. I'll have to share her information, because she sent me a really beautiful uh, message just the other day, Yvonne Christensen. Oh, nice. And, okay. Have you guys heard of her? Um, you have to just Google her, but she um, moved to France and is making champagne. And we had talked about um, doing like a physics female something together. That's awesome. But well, from yeah. from the place of, of somebody that has had the opportunity and the privilege to attend your events, just know that that sentiment, that that 
personal touch to it is always present and it's always something that's very noticeable to me thank you so much regularly one of the few if not the only people of color or women of color at a lot of these trade and press events your events are distinctly authentically diverse and it speaks volumes to what you're doing so keep it up you're an inspiration to a lot (laughs) i really appreciate that that's so great to hear thank you Oh, thank you. I don't think that. it is intentional. Like, I, that's the point. I like, just think for that's me, it's not are. intentional. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are. So, but it's, it's so well done that I wondered, like, it, it, it reads like this girl just has a diverse group of people and inv- invites, like, selected people that will do the right thing and enjoy it. But, it, you know, it's a question of, like, well, if this is intentional, you need to sell this formula because I most can't, are not I, doing it. I can't bottle up and sell it. Like, Funny enough, um, I've never been one to have like a, a posse or a group of friends. My mom loves that. She, again, my mom, I got to bring her into it. She's like, when you went to college, all these girls were in sororities and you're like, and we, we would call you independent Kai. Cause I always like have like different <laughs> friends from like different groups. And I'm just like, I'm not, I've never been one to like travel in a group. I do my own thing. And I love like one-on-one time. And I love to like, if that make sense and that might play into my business strategy it might subtly i don't know if it does or not it's awesome i just do my own thing <laughs> i look forward to sipping again i'm so november your champagne week is normally the kickoff to my birthday because my birthday oh, i love it after so i'm looking forward to like the world being back to some level of normalcy so that we can sip and have a good time together when is your birthday because it's november 15th okay because it's the 9th to 11th this year i made yeah, sure not to do it my kickoff Yeah, well, I made sure not to do it election week because I made that mistake before. (laughs) (laughs) I remember. Um, But yeah, seriously, thank you. Um, It's great. And you're super inspiring. Thank you so much. So I um, actually put the Riddler. So if you don't know about the Riddler, the Riddler, I can never remember Jen's last name. It's Pelka. Pelka. I know it's a P. I'm always like something else. But she had a champagne bar in San Francisco, open one in New York. Is in Greenwich, right? Mm-hmm. One in Greenwich, and it's super tiny, but the champagne list is sick. I mean, yeah. she has some stuff on that list, like, oh my gosh! And so she is a her and her brother own the Riddler, and she just came out with her a champagne called La Femme. Un Femme, Un Femme, and it's just one of those great spots to just have like champagne. But you had your something there because remember you messaged me and I was like, I can't go. I'm about to go to Italy and I can't like get to New York or something happened in November where I couldn't make it. Yeah. So I had the um, the second Fizz's Female uh, event there. It was the Fizz's Female Champagne Week edition. And we had it was a really interesting vibe because the first one happened at Cork Buzz. And if you've been to Cork Buzz in New York, uh, it's very conducive to a classroom style seating uh, environment. And when I started planning to do the Champagne Week edition with Jen in August before she opened, we I didn't know what the space looked like. And then I went in to see it like two weeks before and it was teeny tiny. <laughs> so I was like, well, this is going to be a very like living room style conversation. And what came to my mind, if you like were into MTV, it was like, the MTV when people would like sit on the couches and the bean bags and like sit around and like <laughs> and have a speaker. That's like what I was thinking it was gonna be. I'm like, it's gonna be tiny and very intimate. And um, we had Rita Jamay of La Caravelle right here speaking. And we had Jen, because Jen obviously as a proprietor falls into the category of someone that would be on the panel of as a female. And then we had um Clement Solarge of Large Peugeot. So we have a grower champagne element. And then Nicole Hockley from Krug as the national brand ambassador. Oh, and a, a female made champagne called Marion Beaucer, Elodie. And we had them kind of curving around this like little tiny circular space. And then everyone was just like crammed in. And we had the servers come out and pour each of their champagnes one by one while they were talking. Uh, but it was definitely interesting but I love that format like I it just made me realize that I really like that informal uh casual living room style conversation a little bit more than I do these like classroom seating kind of tastings 
Oh, that's good. So you are definitely having it. Uh, can you type the dates in in the chat for New York Champagne Week so people can plan ahead? We're praying the world opens up so we can go drink New York bubbly. So we have developed an entire um, virtual calendar mm -hmm. and it, it's not going to be Zooms and, and Insta Lives. It's forward thinking a little bit. And um, wait, what is that week? The ninth through the... 11th, I think. Oh, no, no, it's a whole week. Hold on one second. Oh, wait, I'll look at the calendar. <laughs> I'm like, hold on. Someone look at the calendar for me. Um, it's the 7th through 11th, or no, the 9th through the 13th. Okay, 9th through the 13th. Oh, sweet. Right, it's like Shakira's birthday Eve. Yeah, so we've, um, that's awesome. So we've developed a whole virtual calendar that will probably go off no matter what. And then as we get closer, maybe who's to say, I mean, I'm just trying to roll with the punches a little bit, mm -hmm. but um, maybe September we'll add some live events. But right now I will tell you that a virtual calendar is set and it's not a Zoom, it's not an Insta Live. Because I, I do think that by that point, if we're having to go virtual or limited space, um, we're not going to be doing these as, as much. Mm -hmm. right. I think it's going to change. You know, um, it's very interesting. I've been on Zoom and virtual things, and I've had people message me. It was like, I was never really that interested in different kind of wines. And you made me, I went on one, and it was I was very interested. Because I yeah. think it at, a lot of these not just in general, they're taking this elitism that sometimes wine can be. Yeah. And they're actually, as I like to say, put it where the goats can get it. <laughs> so they're taking it and breaking it down because at the, like, at the end of the day is how are we making and selling money? I mean, selling wine, like that, that's the goal. We got to sell wine. Our goal is to yeah. push this and talk. And so you may see companies and I mean, wineries not, they're going to have to continue this. They don't have to continue it all, even when everything opens back, but they definitely need to continue because they're reaching a consumer that they've never cared about. A, th a thousand percent there. I'm not saying, yeah, yeah, like every brand I work with has made it very clear that they're going to be focusing on virtual more than ever and through 2021 and, and beyond. And like, and I've asked a lot of people, you know, um, and maybe Rita can even speak to this just to give us some insight, like because of the things you've had to do or you had to do because of COVID, will you carry on any of this beyond after COVID, do you think, virtually, Rita? Oh, I unmuted you, Rita. Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> like, oh, no, I unmuted you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I definitely think some of it will stay because it's, first of all, it's so convenient. Uh, second of all, um, there's not going to be a push button time where everything's going to open magically. Yeah. We're going to go on for a long time. And sadly, I think there might be some relapses of the COVID. So that's going to be, again, another round. So I think uh, it's going to be way Im more important than it was pre-COVID. But obviously, the real events will hopefully come back uh, because it's different. The interaction is just not the same, mm -hmm. but it's an amazing substitute and also like a new, a new way of learning things. Mm -hmm. um, the, and it the, beats TV. Like I'd rather do this than watch this mindless one, there TV. Was a, there was Wine Empowered. There was a J Jeremy Says from Dujac. A burgundy. It was, it was, it was the, the best one of the Zooms I've done I, as I a agree. media professional Hands that down. I've done. Right? And I did one after that, and I was like, oh, sorry. It's like, it just wasn't the same. I mean, yeah. him and, and uh, Olivier Krug, those were the most, like, you got so much from it. So much. So um, I think this is going to be um, harder to translate now into the real life. It's, it's strange because virtual started as a substitute of real life. And now I think the other way around is happening in that it, what you get in virtual some aspects of it will be hard to translate into real life with as much success. Mm -hmm. And last week I was speaking with Michelle DeFeo, the president of Laurent Perrier, and she was talking about how she had this like $250 night, but 
it was a hundred dollars at her apartment. So she stopped and got a cocktail to go from Dutch Kills, which is, is an incredible bar in New York or in Long Island city. And then she got sushi to go that we usually, we usually be like omakase only. And then she put a bottle of Coors uh, Laurent Perrier in the, in the fridge and had that on her, I was about to say lanai. So lanai in Hawaiian is a, a patio or a, a, like a terrace um, on her lanai. And she was like, it was like this uh, epic evening for a fraction of the cost. And, and that's kind of, um, I'll give you a little hint, the mindset I'm going on when I'm uh, planning the virtual interactive events for Champagne Week, a lot of like the food and wine possibilities that can be had through delivery and, and all of that jazz. But I think also what I'm finding like consumers, because a lot of people don't realize I still work in wine retail. Yeah. So I have to, we're totally online only curbs I pick up, but like le last week, I just had to give people my cell number because the phone kept ringing and people want to know, what are you drinking? What did you get in that's exciting? And, you know, we saw you guys do your, you saw Joy your instant, and then we saw this, can we get this? So a lot of things are like special order, but I think this has reached a consumer that felt forgotten. That's so true. I really, really? think wine has done a disservice if you can't come to the winery you mean nothing. And I, I had to come to terms with that because as a person who travels to wineries, I really realized they're like, you brought brands and names that I never would have imagined. And if that person is, is, is seven people and they're telling seven people and they're telling seven people, it's a bigger, it's a bigger dynamic than what I could have known, right? And that's the same as well when we think about like, how are we moving forward with this and yes everything's going to open up everything's going to slowly take time to open up but i hope that person in for me in middle america who are watching these tastings happen and they don't they can literally go on a website and try to order something because they actually feel a part of that place now mm -hmm. yeah and, uh, um, I mean, that's what makes me excited about Champagne Week. You know, I didn't want to have to, or I was open to it, but I've been trying to think of ways I can take it across the country a little bit, um, or across country. And this is allowing me to do that uh, through these kind of virtual possibilities and also without burning myself to the ground, <laughs> to mm -hmm, be honest. Yeah. Like, yeah, true. It's I'm like, yeah, I was like, okay, how can I expand without having to be everywhere? And I'm so close to my brand, as Shakira said, and I'm so into like, you know, being at everything and being able to interact with everyone. Like, it's not feasible at a certain point. So, and, and Rita is very much the same. We always have that conversation. We're like, well, how can you, how can you be everywhere? You can't be everywhere. <laughs> so, <I'm trying>. uh, <laughs> you try, you definitely yeah. do. Kate yeah. Is, but, um, Kate Payne from um, Stoller says that they are finding a broader audience with Zoom tastings, yeah. mm. you know, which that's not going to change. Cause I mean, if you think people, as much as we're ready to get out the house, as much as I'm ready to travel, I am still like, oh no, I, I can't yet. Let's let other people go before me. Like let them do all the rigmarole that happens. So we're getting that. Um, and Melissa was saying people get stuck in buying the same thing. But I think for in retail now, they can't walk around the store, right? So they have to go online or they have to call or email them like, I normally buy this. And I'm like, well, nope, I'm going to pick you something different. And it's forcing me and forcing the consumer to think outside the box, which I think is great. It's great. And uh, one of the other comments was, um, uh, Drinky LaRue said, it gives the consumer the option to visit, quote unquote, the winery, and we may never have an opportunity to visit, but we drink the wines and support them. I hope this stays. I think that's a great way of like looking at it. Yeah, and Shakira is like, some folks actually have time to engage. It's torn down so much of the pretentious and exclusive exclusivity of wine, which we, we've we talked about. I mean, yeah. that's the thing, you know, it, it has been exclusivity of you know, not just old white guys, but just like, if you have $20 or you have 50, but if you're not spending 200, then you're not drinking a great wine. You know, you get a lot of this, these talks about that as well. 
And mm-hmm. I think what you're doing with like the the physics female and just bringing all these because people don't know people are not researching as much as i want them to open up google they're not yeah yeah like so it's easy to say oh if you want to know about bubbles and and and, and thing go talk to blank you should see my uh notebook every time i have a conversation i'm like google and i highlight it because i there's so much i don't know and i just google it right after the conversation but i should tell you guys how much these wines cost by the way before yeah, um, yeah let's talk about that price point i mean i don't know like this i would buy this for the bottle without anything in it it's 28 dollars. i mean the bottle is just so cute so 28 dollars. and how much is SRP, this uh 36 okay, 36. 36 because this is champagne method so this is 36 so again this is age 32 months Mm-hmm. Whereas this is uh, the Charmant method, but the bottle is just so cute that I would probably just buy it for the bottle. But the wine is delicious. But the juice is good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The juice is good. Yeah. It's, it's amazing wine. Um, but yeah, again, like to, to get people out of their comfort zone, this is a great, I completely agree with you. It's a great time to have people be a bit more adventurous. And I think people are willing to be. Yeah. Kelly Mitchell said the gatekeepers can't control the gates anymore. I like that. I like that statement. And then Melissa says it helps importers, distributors to bring in new products. It's exciting when people know, and then you layer the experience with new products. Yeah. Yeah. I think all of that is like, and she's like regions like Chile and Argentina are so underrated. I completely agree with you. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like people would be like, Oh, sparkling from, you know, Chile. And I'm like, yes, it's good. You know, in, the broad sense of what sparkling can be because now I always tell people like if I'm talking to wine people and I'm like you don't make a sparkling I'm like why not like what can just play around with it like just play just have some fun with it well like I said Baja actually has a ton of amazing sparkling and I don't know enough about it so you mean Guadalupe de Valle yes yes they do but Um, it doesn't it's hard to come out of Guadalupe it's hard to get out of Mexico though well, wait, and they apparently have like an influx of like female winemakers. They have more I, female winemakers than we do in the U.S. Yeah, I need and, to do some. In Guadalupe de Valle. Yeah. Right. So I, in my, like when I talked about the business female trip, I was like, that was my first idea. Because one thing that's been fun for me, well, another thing that's been fun for me with what we have, this climate is kind of getting to like, I've always wondered how I can showcase my like Hawaii beachy side with my bubbly loving hustling side. So it's like- Because guess what? Your bubbly loving hustling side needs to be sitting on the lanai eating a poke bowl. Right. With your, with your bubbles. I can tell you how that goes. I can tell you the minute Kauai opens up to me. So, I mean, I'm going to visit Polana as soon as we can travel again. <laughs> but I mean, I've always wanted to merge my two worlds and I always kind of kept them a bit separate, but this whole thing has allowed me because I'm in Hilton Head and I'm by the beach and I'm by the pool and my office is literally my parents what they call a Carolina room but we call it Ohana room Ohana in Hawaii is family so um it's in like their pool it's like the room that leads the house into the pool area and this is my now recording recording studio much (laughs) to their chagrin (laughs) but um I don't know if I'd be able to be so enthusiastic or feel like I'm dare I say thriving if I was in my tiny apartment in the city like I think that like being in open air and having the ocean so it's the south is a slower pace right but I mean if I was in Hawaii too like I I would feel the same kind of motivation it's like getting to cultivate this whole virtual outlet near the water for me is great and it's letting people into a side of my life which I have kept separate from the champagne world I think so I think that like a lot of the articles I've read have been like it's a great time to let people into your personal life like if you have like this funny kid who who does the same joke all the time you let him come into your zoom and like say the joke and meet everybody or like you know what I mean or like uh Chelsea Petrus who has Chelsea or Chel loves Chelsea loves wine mm-hmm. she always talks about her boyfriend Pete like he's like a character now in her zooms and insta lives so I think that it's a fun opportunity to let people connect with you a little bit more than they would mm-hmm. in another realm yeah, I think that's great. If and that I, makes sense. And I think for that, like, that's a great way to end. It is 7.08. Yeah. That oh. gives me time to drink 
a glug of water. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because it's been literally since four o'clock, I've just been drinking wine. Like in this. No seven. way. <laughs> no, like literally, I had a Chardonnay tasting. It is like all with yeah. all Willamette Valley, Willamette, Willamette Valley Chardonnay. So. Oh, I was going to say, was it Burgundy or? No, it was Willamette Valley <laughs> Chardonnay. And no, it was good because Willamette Valley does a, to me, their Chardonnays resemble Burgundy. It's, they're, I think they make beautiful Chardonnays. I, I do, but I'm yeah. partial to Oregon right now. And uh, I'm real sad that I'm not going to Oregon this year. So I'm trying to hold on to that, um, having a moment. But <laughs> yeah, so I am going to, one, I want to thank you, Blaine, for coming on. I know you're Thanks busy. Thanks for having me. What I'm going to do is, I normally what I do is stop the recordings. So if people want to say stuff, we can have like, I do these open, like off the record, not necessarily on the record. After I stop recording, then I can say whatever the hell I want. That's uh -huh. just kind of what <laughs> yeah, kind of way I roll. So well, yeah. I'm gonna switch. Uh, I'm gonna switch devices. Get on my iPhone. I just got one of these babies, Ooh. and I'm gonna <laughs> a tripod. Yeah, and I'm gonna... no, you're fine. I'm just gonna stop the recording. Okay. Stop the recording. I was so, just gonna everybody, say, Blaine Ashley, Physics Female, you, New guys. York Champagne Week. Thank you guys. We're staying on right, until she goes and moves on to the next thing. We're just stopping recording, and we're.